SmackDown was in Manchester, New Hampshire tonight, and immediately we have to see Dolph Ziggler coming out. It is 2019. I do not want to see Dolph Ziggler on my TV screen anymore under any circumstances. I want this guy to retire. Go do your shitty comedy tour that nobody watches. Go do that. Please get the fuck out of the company. Get off my TV screen. You were a guy who should have gotten a big push about six years ago. Maybe seven years ago. That was the time to push you. They failed. You got hurt after you won the title from Abolter Del Rio in 2013. And then you had more chances. You won that Survivor Series match. But then the company didn't do anything with you. They had their chance. They didn't work it out for whatever reason. It wasn't all his fault. The company tried. But they gave up on him. There was some stuff on Ziggler. But it didn't work out. He's not going to get the Kofi moment. At least I hope not. I want Dolph Ziggler to leave. I don't want to see him on my TV screen anymore. I don't care if he goes to AEW. I won't watch AEW. No one cares if he goes to New Japan. Why does it matter? It's over. I want this guy to leave. So he gets into this big brawl with Kevin Owens. And eventually they have to bring out the Singh Butters and the B team to break up the fight. And then they have uh, Shane McMahon come out and announce that the match between Owens and Ziggler is off. And it's interesting, as soon as that ends, they go to the big, uh, you know, the big opening of the show, the video package, and uh, again, we're in Manchester. This is the go-home show to Extreme Rules, which is this Sunday in Philadelphia. And as soon as we get back, we see Kevin Owens in a ring, he has some things to say. He shoots hard on Shane McMahon, he says a lot of things that a lot of fans think about Shane. He takes away TV time from Asuka, from Kairi Sane. Uh, from Apollo Crews, Buddy Murphy, Ali, the authors of Pain, and more. He really rips into him. He says, you know, whenever you say the best in the world, everyone wants to ping their head against the table, which is definitely true. Just say that right now. I'm not heard, but that's how everyone feels. You know, it's just they're shooting. I'm sure, I don't know if Eric Bischoff has an influence, but um, that's how everyone feels about Shane McMahon. I don't know what, B- I think Bischoff moved to uh, Connecticut today, actually. His family moved, uh, and he's going to take over maybe next week. But uh, this was some shooting. Some this is more Russo, but uh, yeah, he had some shootings. As a lot of people feel about Shane, but it was real, and it was good real. It wasn't like you know breaking the fourth wall. So a lot of fans feel about Shane McMahon. You can incorporate into a storyline. So it was good. No one's basically like quits. He leaves through the crowd and goes to the back. They show Finn Balor uh, walking in the back and uh, before his match with. Nakamura, he does an interview, he talks about how he knew Nakamura for 15 years, and uh, he's ready for the match. They have a match, Nakamura hits the Kinshasa, and he gets a three count, so this sets up a U.S. title match, or I'm sorry, an Intercontinental title match. Where or when they do it is to be determined. I don't think it's been confirmed to, for Extreme Rules yet, it probably is. I think that's the place you do it, or if not, you could save it for SummerSlam. It's a good SummerSlam match, to be honest, it's a cool match. But uh, you could save it. It looks like, however, we had extreme rules. You have uh, Shane McMahon backstage with Drew McIntyre and Elias. They're talking about last night with the whole fiasco with Cedric Alexander. That thing was fucking terrible. And Elias is talking about how he's working on the perfect funeral song. They had Ziggler come out, and he's pissed off what happened with Shane. We show Bailey backstage. Uh, then we go back, and there's a video package between Kofi Kingston and Samoa Joe. There, Joe cuts a good promo. He's talking about how he's going to you know, beat down Kofi Kingston, and then he will put him to sleep, and all you have to, and uh, those have called you brother and family. Uh, he's going to take everything that Kofi Kingston has taken, and he's going to take the title. You know, my thing is with Samoa Joe, he had a huge opportunity about two years ago when he had the big feud with Brock Lesnar. Ever since then, it just hasn't worked out for him. We're not going to push him past a certain level. Um, it's unfortunate, but I don't see him getting a big push anymore. I think he had his chance two years ago. So I think another problem you have to have with uh, Kevin Owens is the fact that, or sorry, not Kevin Owens, um, Samoa Joe is the fact of his injuries. Uh, there's no way he's beating Kofi. I think Roman's going to probably beat Kofi, maybe at SummerSlam. I think Kofi's losing the belt at the next review, but not this show. Uh, but he will lose the belt. So you have Kayla Braxton in the ring, and she introduces Nikki Cross, and then you have Bailey, and this is the contract signing for Bailey and Alexa. So Bailey against Alexa and Nikki in a handicap match at Extreme Rules. 
Uh, Kayla looks great, by the way. She's a beautiful woman. She's probably my favorite backstage interviewer. I like Charlie. Charlie's good. I like uh, Sarah Scrooge. She's good looking, too. Those are the three they used, basically. Um, but uh, Kayla is actually my favorite one. Uh, Kayla, uh, that's weird. Like she's kind of almost trying to put uh, Bailey as the heel. Uh, that's kind of how it feels. But uh, Bailey uh, rips into Alexa, who's not here. I guess she's still ill. She still has a sore throat or whatever. And uh, she's talking. Uh, just not a good promo by Bailey. Bailey's not very good at this. She's just not good. Uh, Bailey says, you know, how Alexa is manipulating Nikki. And she says, uh, Nikki, if she's okay with uh, helping someone else win a championship. Bailey says she understands that she's facing impossible odds, but Nikki does not need Alexa. And she's going to bring everything uh, there. And what happens if Alexa loses and blames you for the loss? Well, it kind of happened in the last show, to be honest. It's kind of Nikki's fault, Alexa lost. Uh, Nikki's saying how she wants to help her friend, and Alexa's not using her. And uh, if they win, they'll be co-champions. So Nikki signs a contract. And then uh, Nikki tells Billy to stick around. She has a match with Carmella. Nikki wins, obviously. Sets up uh, the match for Extreme Rules. Nice win for her over Carmella, even though it's just Carmella. So we see the Kabuki Warriors backstage, and they have a like a uh, face-off with the Iconics. And uh, Paige says they want their title match tonight. Paige says, uh, or, but Payne Royce says Billy Kay is sick, so I guess she caught with what Alexa has. And uh, Billy has, like, mad cow bird flu <laughs> disease. Paige says all you do is run and you make excuses. Paige loves Billy, and uh, she wants to make sure she's sick. She says the match is coming, but it won't be tonight. So uh, you have Dana Bryan and Eric. Walk in the back. I guess they're doing a summit or whatever. I don't know. Roman Reigns. He's being interviewed by one of the ladies. Uh, is it Kayla? I don't remember anymore. Uh, about the match with uh, the tag match to me with The Undertaker. They will be ready. They don't really talk much about um, you know the match from two years ago at WrestleMania. They show the New Day and uh, they're coming out for their summit. And uh, you have Dana Bryan and Roman interrupt. And then you have... Heavy Machinery come out later. This was kind of a comedy segment. I don't know. Daniel Bryan has been feuding with the New Day for a while now. He was feuding with Kofi, obviously, for what the first part of the year, ever since uh, the, the February pay-per-view, then all the way to WrestleMania. He gets hurt, and then he comes back and basically feuds again with the New Day, this time with uh, Rowan against Big E and Xavier. Speaking of Rowan, does anyone have an update on his former tag team partner, Luke Harper? We haven't seen him since he asked for his release, and it was not granted to him, but WWE extended his contract. We haven't heard from him at all since that, all that controversy. Um, yeah, so it went back and forth. Next, you have Otis against Daniel Bryan against Xavier Woods. You have a triple threat match, a nice show, uh, just basically a preview for the match on the Sunday at Extreme Rules. Uh, Otis gets the win here. They're pushing Otis, so that also means there's no way Heavy Machinery is winning. I'm sure Vince McMahon loves Otis. He wants to give him a push eventually, but uh, it won't be this Sunday. I think Ryan and Rowan are definitely retaining here. They show a video package of a scheduled uh, match with Dolph Ziggler and Kevin Owens. It's not happening now. Good. We uh, they do more calm. They show Drake Maverick and catering, and he's with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, who are jumping head of Ember Moon, and they're doing this thing where they're just mad at each other. I don't know what the storyline is. Mandy uh, tells uh, Ember to find a tag partner to set up a tag match, and we'll see who Ember Moon's tag team partner is. Alistair back is shown in the back anyway to find out whose match is with that Extreme Rules. We will see. Uh, they do another police officer promo with Ali. This is just his gimmick now. He's a cop in Chicago. It's a tough thing to do. I wouldn't want to be a cop in uh, Chicago, but that's what he does now. It's just going to be his gimmick. He's no longer you know, the lovable underdog who's trying to beat Daniel Bryan for the title. He's a police officer. So who is he? The big boss man. Ali, the big boss man or something. I don't know. Um they show uh, Black looking uh, who, well, sorry, waiting for who his, partner, his opponent's going to be. They had Tom 
Phillip saying the contract's been signed and we won't uh, know who his opponent is. And uh, he says, you know, he just cuts a promo. He says he applauds his opponent for doing it. We will see who he faces at Extreme Rules. They show Shelton Benjamin, and I don't even know what they're doing here. It's just awkward. There's so much backstage shit. There's like a million stuff backstage. So many promos and backstage segments. Like, geez, I know they're building up a pay-per-view, but just too much. Uh, they show uh, Paul Heyman, uh, who's about to be interviewed by Caleb Brock, so he just walks past her. Uh, we'll see if he if Brock does something. So they show uh, Kofi Kingston being interviewed just so much. I'm bored. He cuts a promo on Joe. It was a decent promo. So main event, you have Dolph Ziggler against Roman Reigns. And what you have here is a match where everyone knows who's going to win. Obviously, it's going to be Roman Reigns. But what I found interesting is Kevin Owens comes back later in the show. He hits a stunner. He takes out Shane. He takes out Drew. And he uh, takes out Elias. And it was awkward because it's like, are they going to really do Shane McMahon and Kevin Owens yet again? Are they really going to still push Shane? They already had Kevin Owens and Shane McMahon two years ago. They had a match in Hell in a Cell and Shane almost kills himself. Why do we have to go back to this fucking feud? Well, it looks like that's exactly where we're going, Shane and KO uh, again. But Roman's going to beat Dolph Ziggler, and uh, hopefully Ziggler leaves after this. But he gets the win, uh, gets momentum for his match. Undertaker couldn't make an appearance uh, for his big match at uh, at Extreme Rules, but you have uh, Owens or uh, Reigns and Taker teaming up on Sunday. It uh, an eventful show. I thought it was better than Raw. Raw was no good uh, as usual. Raw's no good. Went back to being a bad show. Uh, this is definitely a better show. It's just it wasn't that good. It's just so many video package. He had some good stuff with Kevin Owens. He was definitely the highlight of the show by far. Uh, that was the only thing that really made it good. Uh, other than that, the show was kind of average. I don't know where Charlotte is. We haven't seen Charlotte in so long. Where is she? Um, anyway, uh, decent show. You know, it is what it is. We have Extreme Rules this Sunday. Hopefully, it delivers.